Welcome back, Sherlock Holmes, Chapter One. Once again, it's been a, it's been a while. Can't really remember what I was doing, but let's see. Uh, oh, that's the guy who killed the soldier over his sister. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, that's right. And then we have a conversation over here where this gentleman is extremely disappointed. Now, if I recall correctly, the way that this goes is... Um, this is... Um, nope. Um... Yeah, this one right here. So, Mycroft asked us not to, to get involved other than to observe an exchange because um, Mark Ridley here was being blackmailed. And it turns out that guy wasn't actually attempting to blackmail him, but was attempting to murder him so that he would stop dating his daughter. And he's about to be really disappointed with us. And I actually was thinking about it after the last part. Um, and it doesn't make any sense for him to be upset with us. This guy is the son of General Arthur Ridley, and he's upset with us because, oh, delicate political balance and so on and so forth. Um, I would say that killing the son of a general has already upset the balance. The best way to keep the balance is to take him into custody. But as you're about to see, we're going to hear some dumb here from Mycroft's agent. Good day, Mr. Holmes. Okay, or not. Maybe he has already he already told us. So I guess watch the last part to see the dumb. Um, but it is dumb. Alright, so we are gonna do Amuse from Abroad this time because um, we need to get to it. There is a missing shopkeeper side quest here, but um I want to. I want to do some more main mission. Is you know, I guess uh, you expand uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, This was in Old City, right in front of uh, that thing, that place uh, over. Oh, it's already pinned for us. Okay, well, or I pinned it last time. I don't remember. <clears throat> oh. oh. Well, they are upset, aren't they? Could not care less. All right, uh, so we are going to need to fast travel here. And and east. How much money do I have? 88? Okay. Manhuba. Oriental rugs at a good price. Marhaba. It's a good day for a purchase. Merhaba, it sure is. Okay. Um, stuff. Whoa, what? A perfect toy for children? I don't know about that. It doesn't look like a functional pistol. It just looks too ornate for a child. Um, well, I'm gonna buy that. And Venetian chandelier. And I got one more here, dressing screen, and we're gonna get the Anatolian rug. And we'll May come back for the rest. Bring you joy. All right, heading down this way. And Hermes was the main road. Somewhere about here. Oh, at the caravan uh, caravanserai. Ticking clock. All right, Mr. Holmes, you came. Oh, how kind. 
Though now, of course, I realize it is because of my game, not the works on display. It needn't be one or the other. But it is. Your man's disguise was easily debunked, Mr. Vogel, but I shall admit that you planted in me the seed of curiosity. Ah, terrific! I had no doubt you'd put the pieces together. Let us call it an opening gambit before the real game begins. So, this little game of yours, what's it about? An enigma to solve. A locked area in the basement with no windows found brutally vandalized. I have no clue how it was possible. Okay. Well, first of all, what was down there that was vandalized? This locked area downstairs, <laughs> what exactly was it? The under gallery. It's always shut, and I'm the only one with the key. Ah, so this is your private collection, not part of the gallery. Oh, no! It's an exclusive exhibition of eccentric pieces. Only a select cadre of artists, investors, and collectors are admitted. Not everyone deserves to have their eyes opened. All right, what happened? What about this intrusion? What happened? Last night, I was about to leave the gallery when I heard a noise downstairs. I went to the basement, but I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. It was admittedly a rudimentary inspection. It is not uncommon to get rats down there, so seeing nothing of note, I left and locked up the building. When I returned this morning, alas, I discovered that part of the exhibition had been torched, and there was no sign of the intruder. The mystery being, of course, that all the doors to the gallery were locked exactly as I left them. And the door to the basement is the only entrance? Correct. Tell me you're not intrigued. Well, this matter is certainly within my wheelhouse. This intrusion troubles me. Please take a look around if you're willing. The under gallery is through the door at the end. I will see what I see. Okay. Grave of a suicide victim. God. What's this childlike drawing? The Yellow Christ, Paul Gauguin. What about this red haired lady? Love and Pain, Edvard Munch. This one doesn't have a sign by it. Did I see this one? Pope Formosus and Stephen the Sixth, Jean-Paul Laurent. Oh, I definitely know this one. I'm not a uh, huge fan of these particular styles, although I, had, of course, know Gauguin and Munch and so on. Enough to know that I'm mispronouncing their names for sure. I know it's monk. I don't. I don't care. I'm not Dutch. The apparition, Gustav Moreau. Well, this one I do know as well. You sure you don't like art, Sherry? I like it just fine. This one I definitely know because this is my my style. The Origin of the World, Gustave Courbet. I am a fan of French realism, and yes, there is a reason the plant is there. Although I do wonder. Yes, okay. If we peek behind the plant, it, it is uncensored. <laughs> That's not why I'm a fan of the style. It just happens to be my favorite style. Uh, here's an ass. Bullington from behind. Chatman. The Luncheon on the Grass. Edward Monet. I do love art galleries. And there's the basement, and is there anything over here? No, of course not. Okay, so then we go to the other gallery. The AC Swinburne room. Back home, we've got a taxidermist. He's gonna have a heart attack when he sees what I bring him. Hmm. Oh, it's that 
shark we saw with the strange bites. Carcaridon carcarius. Now uh, we have... Looks like a sex dungeon of some kind. I don't know. Uh, we've got... This is, nope, this is a coal chute. Come back to that. It's got a drapery. Looks like... It's probably supposed to be satin, but that texture looks like leather. Uh, bones and a casket. Grow and a handprint. Um... <clears throat> this I recognize this painting, but I don't remember who it's by. Um, there's the torched part. Over there. And I recognize this painting too. Saturn devouring his son. Oh, grim composition. I'm flinching in its ferocity, yet. Yeah. Somehow beautiful. Mm, I agree with the first part of it. I don't think it's meant to be beautiful, though. It is weird that you find it beautiful. The parasites of creativity. <laughs> or just a reflection of the artist's recreational interests. Mushrooms growing out of a painting. Yeah, okay. I, I see that. Is there any... Back home, we've got a taxidermist. And you're just going to repeat yourself? He's going to have a heart attack when he sees what I bring A in. simplistic attempt at provocation. It certainly is. Well, it got my attention when I passed by the first time. All right, let's go back to the shovel. Old, and hasn't been used for a long time. So this is a display? So the left step's limp. length is shorter than the right. It indicates that the walker was lame. Uh, well, that's a little bit mean. I would say he walks with a limp, but okay. A true artist never shows an unfinished piece. Is this actually covering? So it is. So this is not an exhibit. This is just somebody sleeping down here. Okay. Crow. Sherry. How about some company in that dreary chamber of yours? Leave my loneliness unbroken, John. Nevermore. A handprint of the thing from another world. But it looks fresh, and its coal origin ruins the effect of the extra mundane. Alright. And we, oh. Sodden and mold ridden. One presumes deliberately. That's too bad. I've seen that painting. It should have been preserved. All right, we got a new mind palace game. Oh, wild Oscar Wild. Okay, let's do the mind palace thing. Off. Muse from Brock, coal for Prince, and hand traces and Doug. Uh, okay. We don't have anything connected to just yet. Let's back down here. Okay. Mm. Oh, sheer vandalism. Only an ignorant person could do such a thing. Or somebody who has a legitimate problem with what they contained. Um, what am I missing? Damn. Not 
earth. I keep hearing something when I'm moving around, but I can't. Oh, there we go. What is it? Oh. Malpal. It's the Paul Mall. A Malpal bot. Oh, okay. Oh, the coal print. Coal fingerprints. I think we're looking for a man with a coal moustache. Okay. Uh, gallery intruder. A smoker who limps. And, okay, they don't go together, apparently. Alright. I guess I was looking for for more, but I don't see more, so... Um, alright, all of these were hanging here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... And we still have eight, nine, ten still here. So they were taken down deliberately, they were brought over, they were piled up. I don't understand what caused this one to burn, because it seems to be on the periphery of the fire, although if it was hot enough, I suppose. I don't see any traces of coal, I don't see any footprints, so this all seems to be okay. Let's see what we've got here. Um, got that. Okay. Okay, oh, there's very much on the floor. Okay. What's this? Oh. Oh. I have repaired the main hall of my manor. It now feels full of memories. Oh, okay. All right, well, then we can return back to stone wood and get some movement on that. Let's furniture in the manor that belong to my childhood bedroom. Uh, okay, so the main hall and the bedroom are apparently sufficient. Um, one thing at a time, however. All right, so... Cole, uh, let's see, it says that there was a handprint and it was slightly moved here in the casket. So let's double-check this. Is there more here? No. We already got all the clues here. There's three. Yes, indeed. Moved Y. Looks like it was slid over. Did he actually, like, get in here and take a nap or something like that? Alright, well, either way, we're looking for a guy with a limp, covering coal, smokes malpals. sure if there's more here to see or what. But let's go talk to Vogel again and see if we have new information. I wish I could show you the gallery under different circumstances, but life is beautiful in its unpredictability, isn't it? Okay, apparently not. Um, can I... Track the coal footprints. Does not appear so. Okay. So, then what, uh, what am I missing? Um, well, I suppose we have an unknown person, so we're trying to find his identity, but that seems like the kind of thing we would ask about. You know, like, I'd go up there and I'd say, hey, Vogel. Do you have anyone who works here shoveling coal? Do you know anybody who smokes Malpals? Oh. Closed with a metal bolt. Yeah, that's what I missed. Magnet filings. 
We used a magnet to open it up from the inside. Footprints. Size nine and a half. Small, small person. Alright. So then I guess Vogel wouldn't know, because it seems like there's footprints here. A small person with a limp came down the chute, opened up the coal chute with a magnet. Oh moly. Somebody was really determined to burn these paintings. All right, Father Watson. Um, it wasn't Vogel. Was that Vogel? I think that's Vogel. Um, yeah, I think I think the unknown person got in there with him. Those are my two choices. So yeah. Because it's moved off to the side and there's a handprint there, a coal hand. Why did you get in the coffin, dude? Um, over here we've got a small unknown person. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't think he planted the footprints. Let's see what else we got just to be sure. Okay, yeah. There's two options, so this is it. Okay, it's odd then that he didn't do anything to this. Maybe he didn't notice it in the dark or something. Uh, no, the unknown person definitely didn't come that way. They came down the coal chute. Yeah, that's him. And then... Also didn't do anything to any of these other exhibits. See, it really seems like he had a grudge against these specific paintings, but... He's covering up the theft of one of them. So he really wanted one of these paintings. Yeah. And he stole, so yeah, whatever was hanging there, he really wanted it. Stole it through the frame and the fire just to cover up the theft. See if we got it. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the hatch bolt. He accidentally pushed a shovel to the floor. Vogel heard the noise. At the sound of his approaching footsteps, the intruder hid inside the coffin. Oh, okay. When Vogel entered the basement, he failed to notice anything strange and left without properly checking. The intruder waited until Vogel had left the caravanserai before burning the paintings in Wilde's room. But the vandalism was a cover for the theft. Alright, I got most of that. I wasn't sure why he climbed into the casket. I'm still not sure, because honestly, it looks like there's tons of places he could have hid. Like, behind this painting, or down there, or over there, or down here. It looks like there's a lot of places he could have hid. Um, Alright, so now we are back to talking to... Where is this? Now I think we talked to Vogel. The pieces are not what I expected. What do you think my collection is about? Um, the ones downstairs or the ones up here? I'm guessing he means the ones downstairs. Um, well. Is it about decay? Uh, there's the shark and the mushrooms. There's the painting that's moldering. There's a corpse down there. Um, seems like decay fits. Death also fits. We've got Saturn devouring his son. We've got mushrooms, I suppose, are a sign of death-ish. Um, the body, of course. Um, don't know what's under the sheet. Um, I don't know what was on the paintings. And the shark, of course, is death as well. Decadence. The... Um, mushrooms, according to what Sherlock said, are a little bit about decadence. Um, 
Saturn devoured his sons in order to preserve his own power. Um, the bed, if it is indeed an exhibit, that's fairly decadent. Um, but, um, I think that, uh, just about every one of the exhibits is about death. I think most of them are about decay, but decay is a part of death. I think it's about death. It's a reflection on mortality. Nothing lasts forever, no beauty sustains itself, and everything succumbs to darkness. Am I right? I don't know. Well, that's absurd. Of course you know. It's your gallery. There is no one answer, no singular truth, but many filtered through the subjective mind. That forgetting, embellishing, lying machine. Besides, what's wrong with a lie if it makes life more interesting? What's wrong with a lie? It corrupts the ability of others to behave freely and rationally. Men never act freely and rationally anyway. That doesn't mean it's okay it to manipulate people what with lies. Or isn't in the end. The only important thing is how you feel. And I simply want to feel and consume as much as I can. Don't you? Feelings are simply one's animal ancestry trying to wrest back control of the brain. I try to avoid the distraction. You try not to feel, even in a place like this? None of it moves you? To be frank, I struggle to maintain even a wit of interest in art. But Mr. Holmes, it is joy incarnate, mankind's greatest achievement. Mankind's highest achievement above all others is objective and rational thought. I see then why you dislike art, for it means whatever you want it to. Or perhaps, Mr. Vogel, I was lying. Uh -huh. Okay, um, well, the case was interesting. I don't think we're done with it yet. We don't know who or what we don't know what's where the painting is mr vogel my investigation has revealed that the intrusion was not merely vandalism but theft the limping visitor left your place with a canvas that's very impressive okay do you know anybody with a limp who is fairly short and smokes male pals this thief was familiar with the gallery and he was sporting a limp do any of your clients or artists come to mind my your attention to detail is remarkable, Mr. Holmes. I should introduce you to Bosch's works. Alas, I'm afraid I cannot suggest a culprit. It's somebody you know. They've definitely seen the painting before enough to covet it enough to steal it. Um, so, do you at least know which painting was missing? The fire was a clever attempt to hide a stolen painting, even if it didn't fool me. I found the remnants of an empty frame in the pile of ashes. The canvas had been removed. Do you know which paintings in the Wild Room may have interested a thief? Were any particularly expensive? Those pieces belong to a well-known artist named Boniface Mercurio. They're controversial, but not of a notably high value. Okay, so then if it wasn't profit-motivated, then it was personal. So what were the paintings of and why were they controversial? The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the latch and dislodged the shovel while doing so. That's the noise you heard yesterday. When you went downstairs to investigate, he hid in the coffin. Hmm. It seems I should have checked the space more thoroughly. There's something more, is there not? I can see it in your eyes. Hmm. Indeed. There is another intriguing angle. I recently received an anonymous offer for one of Mercurio's works. The sum was more than fair, and indeed could have saved Mercurio from his artistic poverty. But he declined it. Was it a performative whim? Some artists lionize pain and hardship as if their work would be worse after a meal and a hot bath. I cannot tell. But not only did he refuse the deal, he insisted on displaying the painting in the public space. I was hoping to change his mind, but artists are a special breed of stubborn. Okay, uh, so what is the painting? What was depicted in the piece? Hmm, a bound woman wrapped in robes, being penetrated by a red devil that stared at us, the viewer. The beast had numerous tails growing from his back, and a large crowd gathered around the pair, silently watching the orgiastic scene. Okay, well, given the nature of the other works on display, it's hard to see why that one stood out. What could possibly be its value? The evaluation of art is very subjective, Mr. Holmes. After all, art is everything. A poem, a bruise, the beads of sweat on your beloved skin. Even a masterfully solved crime. I'm not sure I see the connection. 
Regardless, the painting was one of a series called The Sabbath Night in Cordona. The works depict sex, violence, and other controversial acts that life, for better or worse, contains. Ah, I see. I'm not sure that you do, but that can wait for another time. Personal enough to go through all this trouble, my guess is that the woman depicted as the thief's wife, mother, sister. Where does Mercurio live? So where can I find Boniface Mercurio? I know he lives somewhere in Old City, but couldn't be more specific. He's a prominent figure, so finding him shouldn't be a problem. Well, I believe I have enough to begin. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. Your gallery certainly has unexpected depths. I'm delighted to have been able to please a friend. In return, I expect you to come back with good news. Or at least with a good story. Oh, whatever you say. Oh, did you see that? I just fucking moonwalked away after our conversation. That's how it's done. Show dominance on Vogel. Moonwalk the fuck away. <clears throat> All right. Research. Um. Prominent figure, huh? Old city, huh? Um, I guess it was the newspaper. Yeah. See if we can find some news articles. So on the lookout for those like, lions or whatever for the treasure hunt. Please don't talk. Thank you. All right. Um, I guess he's current, so we'll do recent news. Um, or wait, no. Um, old city, because it's where he's from. He's a celebrity. I forgot to mute my shit. And... Uh, front page. There he is. The brawl at artists' sellout. Past week has brought us a new scandal regarding the so-called Artistic Higher Society. It all began at the painting sellout named by... It all began at the painting sellout. I don't know. That's. I didn't realize that was a noun. Um, as the Dance of Decadence, the director of a publishing house, The Lion, Darren Turwick, broke the idol by throwing a chair at a decadent artist, Boniface Mercurio. As Mr. Turwick said, he did it because Mr. Mercurio brought dishonor to his name. The column writer graciously recommend, reminds the reader that recently Mr. Mercurio was spotted with Mrs. Turwick at a coffee shop. Afterwards, an orchestra conductor, Kurt Gallagher, smashed a painting across Mr. Turwick's head to protect his friend, Mercurio. A large brawl started, including a large number of the customers. After a protracted fight, the police arrived. All the high society brawlers were arrested and placed under guard for a week. What a breathtaking event it was. As your loyal personal advisor, I suggest that you obtain a souvenir from the sellout. Unfortunately, it has since ended, but Mr. Boniface Mercurio himself invites our readers to visit his home and purchase some of his paintings. You will find him at the address uh, Hermes Avenue between Scarlet and Olive Street in Old City. Scarlet and Olive and Hermes. Okay. I know that Hermes ends here where we were, so Olive, Scarlet, somewhere hereabouts. And can come over here. <clears throat> oh. Here. 
this. Okay. All right, let's go. Excuse me, young man. Where do you think you're going? Greetings, ma'am. I'm looking for the... I don't care who you're looking for. You shall not pass. No visitors allowed. I wish to buy a painting from Mr. Boniface Mercurio. Is he at home? Dearie, tell me because old age has made me blind. Did someone write information bureau on my forehead? Because I'm not here to answer your questions. Entry is for residents only. If you aren't a resident, please leave. Or I shall report you to the police. Wow. Rude. Um, yeah, I'm totally leaving. Mm. Apparently there's no sneaking around her. Okay. Not as tan as, and unkempt as the bohemian artist. Need a disguise, apparently. Okay. Tan and unkempt. How can we do tan? Um, not particularly. Unkempt. Um... all the way over there. Oops, I went too far. Bookstore. Okay. Don't pass by. Well, let's pick something that suits you. <clears throat> okay. Um, Bohemian. African casual. Tan. Artist's tan powder. Okay, we'll buy that. Artist's bristles. Okay. I don't remember seeing this for sale before, so... Um... I gotta rent this. I can't afford the hair. Um... Do I just need a shabby outfit? Because I think I got one. Be careful with what you've taken. Um. Actually, I look a lot like this guy. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Um, do I have... A, I have this. The open shirt. Doesn't look the same. Though. I think that's supposed to be the bohemian. Let's pick something that suits That I was just looking at. Um, I think it's supposed to be this. Be careful with what you've taken. Don't miss out on yep. my unique yep, clothes. Yep, yep, that's it. I love the part. the wrong door. Uh, 
How about now, old lady? Boniface, sweetie. Is that you? Ah, old age does terrible things to one's sight. I didn't recognize you at first. How are you, Mum? I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost my key. Do you have a spare? For heaven's sake! How many times will you lose that key of yours? Of course I have a spare. You artists all live in your own little world. Please, accept my thanks. I would rather accept your rent. You promised to pay me several weeks ago and I'm still waiting. I will pay you, I promise, very soon. You'd better do, my dear. Or else I'll just change the lock. And I won't fall for those cow eyes. Okay. Gotta say, nice outfit. I'm looking good. Which one is it? This one? Mm -hmm. This one? Yes. Oh. He's dead. And I'm standing in the blood. Because it teleported me to the middle of the room. Why would he do? Alright, this is the way out. Yes, okay, so come in here. Wine bottles, mail, maybe drinker. Bad news recently. Um canvases unfinished. I mean they're blank. And a crate by the door, just had a delivery perhaps. Um, that seems to be the painting in question. We'll get to that in a second. The shovel drawers, broken bottle. Is that a camera? Yes, it is. Um, smashed mirror. Right, mundane paintings on the wall. Sketches of women. Um... He has fallen back. There's blood pooled here. No drags, but he staggered, it looks like. <clears throat> Figure drawings, humans. He's got his palette set down. There's a painting on the floor underneath the blood. So the painting fell before he bled. Lemons, bananas, hookah. What the fuck? Huh. Okay. Um. Carpets, pillows, fruit over there. Something in the corner seems to have fallen. Back here we've got basin. Maybe we're developing photos. Okay. Well, he does have a camera. Um. It's not dark enough to be a dark room, but okay. Uh, let's start over here by the door with the wine bottles. He's a drunk. Aunt May whiskey, brandy bucks. Quite a collection he had here. Mm -hmm. And the heat of the... Uh, the chest canvases. has been searched. Searched for what? They're all blank. Camera... I wonder where he got that fancy camera. A gift from one of the women he's banging. Blue cloth fibers, knife is missing. It appears the wine was truly awful. Got a wine glass in here with a rosary. Despite the overall tendency towards mess, you cannot sit with the drawer pulled out like this. Someone left it after searching. Cannot sit at a, with a drawer like this. Sit. I suppose that chair over there. Alright, let's see this. Red skin, tails on the back. Reminds me of Verda's description of the stolen painting. Mm-hmm. Sure do. I'm going to check out the dark room first. Well, first, let's do diligence over here. 
The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. Really? It looks fine to me. The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. Um... Okay. Kinky club. Look at this, John. Isn't it our stolen demon? Oh, he has a second camera. Fancy indeed. The blood has dried. I've heard of this style of painting. It is called expressionism. Throat cut. The wound is precise. It was inflicted by a razor or a knife. And by surprise. Soaked in blood. It seems as if the puddle of blood was here before the rags. Hmm. Judging by post-mortem rigidity, the body lay here for one or two days. It said bruising. Those are meant to be defensive wounds. Could be the murder weapon. Mighty sharp knife, but yeah. A normal kitchen knife. Uh, okay, so killer comes in. He's painting. Sneaks up behind him. Cuts his throat. Starts looking around for what he's looking for. The murder weapon doesn't look like it was wiped off, so I'm not sure what the point of the rags is. Um, pulls this one out. It's obviously not what he's looking for, though. He stole the painting. I'm a little bit confused, but... Let's see what we can put together here with John walking around, clicking things. Hopefully not upside down on the goddamn ceiling. Um, I mean, there's this. This is a sign of violence. Smash them over there. I don't see any blood. It was just blue fibers. He's not wearing a blue shirt, so no. Okay, if those are my choices, then the killer was wearing something blue. Ah, that seems extremely unlikely. Um, I guess of those two, this seems more likely with my information. I don't think so. Yeah, that's probably it. He was admiring the painting, maybe feeling a little bit wistful for the subject. A moment of regret. That's maybe what the rags are for. Maybe tried to seal them back up. Um, could be. This could be a suicide, yeah. Sure, there's a there's a piece here I'm missing. Mercurio's body lay on the floor in his room. Blood from his cut throat covered the floor. I found a kitchen knife. Spotted bruises on his knuckles. He had lain there for one to two days. And the theft occurred.
I think he said last night, so this would have been after he was dead. Broken bottle of wine. Shower frame with blue cloth fibers. Hmm. We got to commit here. We've got to commit here. I have two clues here that say that he was attacked by the intruder. I have two clues here that say that he might have killed himself. Why do I think he killed himself? The only reason I'm thinking that is because the murder weapon was left here. It wasn't cleaned up. Um... And I don't see any uh, real signs of a struggle other than this. Which is why, with the signs of a struggle, we've got two that say he was attacked. But without them, we've got two that say that he wasn't. Can't tell. Th yeah, I think this is him keep putting the rags on it to try and stop the bleeding. I think. All right, he's got the bottle in his hands here, so he's okay. He's here developing a picture. Here's somebody at the door. See somebody rifling through his pictures. So he runs. They get into a struggle. They fall back here. The killer smash into the mirror. He's wearing something blue. They struggle. The bottle's broken now, so he grabs another weapon? Or is he trying to protect the painting? Uh, meanwhile, the killer has grabbed the knife right there next to his hand, so attacks him. And then... I guess that's it. Mercurio was developing photographs when the intruder snuck in. Mercurio heard him coming. While the thief was searching the chest, the painter ran towards him with a bottle in his hand. He smashed it across the thief's head. The intruder had no choice but to defend himself, and the weapon of opportunity happened to be a kitchen knife. Mercurio stepped aside to grab the painting, but the wine-blinded thief attacked Mercurio's throat. When the thief came to his senses, he saw Mercurio bleeding on the floor. He grabbed the rags and tried to bandage him, but it was too late. Why did Mercurio attempt to snatch the painting in the middle of a fight? To strike the intruder? Not with his painting, it was too important to him. That's exactly what I was wondering. Um, okay, that's the story. The visitor didn't want to kill Mercurio. Murder wasn't the goal. That sounds right to me. And that's it. Okay. <sighs> so... Um, yes, I guess that's the question. Why? Can I get a closer look? It's time for some chemical magic, John. Oh. Okay. Well, then I guess we'll do that. I, I just wanted to get a closer look at it, but okay. Negative four, negative six. 
this reverse that there here and we need negative six what we can do um Maybe negative three. We can do three. We can do decrement. We can do inverse. And then we can do... Oh, wait. Hold on a sec. That's positive two. So get rid of that. Uh, we need to... No, we don't want to do that. Whoa, excuse me. Um, all right, three and four can inverse both of these. Um, then we can. Actually, we can hold, pull off on this here. Combine these. We can four, six. We have so many symbols now. Keep trying. I was trying to find a clever way to do it, but you know what? It uh, doesn't seem to. It seems to be just as effective with just brute force because we have so many operations now. It's a still. Yeah, we already knew it was a still life painting in Mercurio's room that we were aware of. Um, we have two skulls on the wall. We've got the pillows, candelabra, fruit is still on the floor, books are on the floor, we got the bananas, we got the lemons, we've got, oh, it's not a hookah, it's a vase. Um, something is definitely going to be changed, though. Uh, that doesn't look like the painting we need, Sherry. As expected, but that doesn't mean it won't tell us anything. Let's put it on the easel where it belongs. Okay, if we must. I guess this is his most ordinary painting. Spot the two differences, John. Skull is missing. What else? Kinalabra is there. Books are there. I guess this is his most ordinary painting. Spot the two differences, John. I guess this is his most ordinary painting. Spot the two differences, the John. Thing in the background, the big thing. Yeah. Nothing this. behind it. If the intruder didn't take it, the skull should be somewhere here. Nothing behind it. Bones? I've got a thing for bones. <sighs> I 
That's the two things I noticed, is the skull was missing and there's a weird tree here now. <laughs> oh, it's right there. It's right there, next to the toilet. Monster was actually a man. Poor girl. John, you ought to be thrilled. We are now hunting the devil himself. Uh, what were you saying, Sherry? I was too busy sketching the scene, you know, crimes and such like, daily routine. Did you find something? A photograph. It depicts a man in a red suit with tails sprouting from his back and multiple people in masks watching the scene. It all adds up. But the act of love, it wasn't given willingly, John. It was a violation. And the girl, she was with child. Give that to me now. Did you recognize someone? No. Although the victim is not from Cordona, she is African. Look at the ritual scars on her face. Get that image out of your brain. You have to continue the investigation. I must speak to the landlady. Perhaps she saw or heard something. Sherry, you cannot tell her the truth about Mercurio. It will hurt her. John, that's illogical. Sooner or later, she will come here and discover a corpse, and I still need to talk to her. Just avoid mentioning corpse. All right? Stick to the character. Tell her to call the police. I'll take that into account. And wait here. I've redrawn the people in the photograph. Now you can proceed with your investigation without those horrific details. Okay. That's frustrating, but all right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, stash behind the skull all right but for some reason it wasn't found that's odd sketch of the abuser okay John has redrawn the photograph of a violation that I found in Mercurio's place in this painting depicts a pregnant woman with tribal scars on her face He suggested staying in character, really. <clears throat> I mean, I don't see why not, because it's not as if telling her the truth is really going to provide us any manner of advantage, but still... What's wrong? Doesn't really seem like it should be you much of a like concern for us. Can you tell me if anyone else has recently entered the flat? Oh, you're talking about that limping man. I'm sorry I let him in. I was scared. And I thought maybe... Maybe he would motivate you to find money so that you would pay your rent. No offense, dear. Can you describe him? Oh, so you weren't at home. I was so certain you didn't leave your flat that day. He was of average height, had a limp and a tattoo on his neck. And he was smoking Malpal cigarettes. My husband used to smoke those. They have a horrible smell I can recognize from a mile away. Okay. I uh, call the police. Can I ask a favor? Of course, dearie. Please call the police and ask them to enter the flat. And don't look inside until they come up. What? What trouble have you stepped in this time? It really doesn't matter. Thank you, Mum. Okay. Perfect gentleman. Okay. That's it? All, no, not all evidence collected. We still got this. We gotta talk to people. Well, yes. Thief wanted the photograph. Um, yep. I think we're going to need to... Oh, Sherry, that was close. 
but you did everything correctly. Now, take off your outfit. I can't let you walk around in a dead man's clothes. Okay. Uh, that's fine. I think I need to do it. Or do I... Hold on. No, this is a talking one, or an interview one, but I don't know what to wear just yet, so... You. Are you able to help me? Doesn't remind me of anything. Someone else can help better, sir. Okay, how about you? Can I ask you a question? I can't help you, friend. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Shut up. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? Help me, please. I have a question, too. Who looks an idiot in his fancy clothes? It's you. I will destroy you. Richard's attire. Casual detective. We're not suits. I think that this is what we're looking for. Okay, that looks pretty good. Can I ask you a question? Oh, I've heard to talk. There we go. Scars on the face, uh, Sir Girl's face seem to be from the U's ethnic group tribe. The only place where you can find U's people is in Cordona, is in the refugee camp located under Victoria Bridge between Scaladio and Silverton. Okay. Scaladio and Silverton. Rolling Ricks. The Lord, wait, what? Victoria Bridge between Scaladio and Silverton. Scaladio, Silverton. Oh, that one. Duh. Okay, and then let's do. Judgment. So underneath this bridge. Oh, down there. Okay. Beasts. What? Uh oh, we've got some trouble here. Excuse me. Wow. Yeah. There we go. First they come to our land, then they murder our people. <laughs> Drop them all into the sea. It's uh, quite a voice. First Is this the to you? I wish I could help you, sailor. Wish I could help you. Oh, that's the sailor outfit. First they come to our land, then they murder our people. Do you know anything about this? Unfortunately, my case book is empty on this. You obviously mm -hmm. haven't thought this all through. Are you? Sir, this place is off limits to the public. Please state your business or leave, or I shall request that the police escort you out. I'm from City Hall, and I'm a private investigator. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm a private investigator. I'm looking for a witness for a case. A private investigator? Really? Even so, you're not authorised. I can't let you in. And you are? I'm Ronald Harlow, here to handle the refugee situation on behalf of City Hall. I'm the acting supervisor here. So I have full authority here to ask you to leave, or I shall order the police to detain you for trying to pass the blockade. Please, step back. Okay.
Okay. Ronald Harlow is a depressed young clerk. Exhausted by his day-to-day -day job, City Hall has assigned him to oversee the refugee camp, but he's too tired and indifferent to solve the problems that arise. He has a scant mustache and he thinks that he thinks makes him look older. Pale skin. Uh, and Bagsender's eyes suggest he is tired of his dark, cramped office, which he rarely leaves. Yet, judging by his... Clean and barely worn shoes. He does not favor the outdoors in any case. Sweaty Palm suggests that Ronald is stressed. He may have worn fewer clothes considering today's weather or um, lacks experience dealing with problems outside of his writing desk. Tempting looked older than his years by growing a scant mustache. Um. What is the difference? What is the difference between the two? They seem very similar. Okay, hold on a second. I, I'm not paying close enough attention. I'm gonna miss something, and then uh, I don't know. Bad, a bad thing might happen. Um. Okay, so this one, tired pen, uh, pen pusher. He's experienced, but he's tired of dealing with this. This one... He's not very happy with such a responsibility. <clears throat> Tempting, okay. Whatever. I, does this really matter? Probably doesn't. It's probably going to be fine either way. What about the murder? Oh, this has no bearing on anything. Mere assumption. I assure you that the situation is under the police's control. I know you want to deal with this in the right way. You are obviously a professional and a responsible person, but you clearly have never handled a situation like this before. I am handling it, Mr. Holmes. Don't question my capability here. And tell me how you do it. You can't even calm this gathered crowd, and as for the police, they're not quite managing it either, are they? You consider yourself a problem solver, but until today, you've been solving problems sitting at your desk in a dark corner of a city hall room. Here, you need a more practical approach. What are you driving at, Mr. Holmes? I can help you. I can help you to handle the situation if you're truly interested in solving things quickly and quietly. And how exactly would you manage that? Simply tell the police that I'm the city hall and I'm permitted to investigate the scene. I'll work out the rest. But in return, I need your help finding my witness. She's a young refugee. She's with child or was with child recently. Look, there is indeed a dead body inside the camp. So even if the girl you are looking for is there, all the refugees are now being detained and interrogated by the police. They won't allow you to speak with her. And I can't do anything about that until the situation settles down. So it's in our mutual interest to settle it. Oh, I suppose that things are bad enough that I ought not shy away from help. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell the police to allow you to come inside. Just tell me when you're ready. Um... Mr. Harlow, how did the refugees end up here exactly? Oh, so you're not from around here yourself? I've been away for some time, but I read the papers. Yes, this whole story has been in the papers for almost a year now. They were smuggled to Cordona on a ship from Africa. Smuggled? Then why didn't you deport them? The smugglers managed to sneak them to shore and hide them inside an abandoned warehouse. When the police raided the warehouse and found the refugees there, the ship was already gone. We aren't even certain as to which ship it was. We have busy shipping routes with other colonies these days, you see. So you decided to lock them up under a bridge? There was no other option. We're still trying to work out what to do with them. I only hope we'll find a humane solution and not put them on a raft and float them out to sea. Okay. Mr. Harlow, what exactly do you do here? What are your responsibilities? What I do, and what I am responsible for, are two different realities, Mr. Holmes. On paper, I am in charge of the camp territory, security, provision, and the refugees in general. What I actually do most of the time is knock on every city hall door trying to obtain some funding, or at least rations for the camp. The police here on city hall's behalf too? They are. Minus those who came here after the body was found. 
The governor won't let the refugees disperse into the island, so there's a significant police presence guarding the camp. Naturally, they answer directly to the police. I have some influence here, but I'm not their direct authority. Okay, whatever, I'm let's go. To take a look at the scene. All right. Go inside the camp and find Inspector Tewksbury. He's the officer investigating the scene. Tell him I sent you. Say you're an independent expert from City Hall. He'll fill in the details for you. I'll find my way with words. Thank you, Mr. Harlow. Murder! Beasts! Would you? Officers disperse that crowd? What the fuck? So they keep these refugees under a bridge like proverbial trolls. No wonder the people outside are so disturbed. Yeah. Cheekies. Who the hell are you? How did you get in here? Mr. Ronald Harlow, let me in, sir. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a surveyor of refugee affairs with City Hall. You're Inspector Tewksbury, I presume? A surveyor? What does that even mean? In short, I've been sent to conduct an extensive report on the incident for the Colonial Office, and to assess all the damage inflicted on state property. Got it. Another paperworm sent to count money and get food for archive mold. Go on, look around, but don't make yourself too at home. As if I didn't have enough problems before you appeared. Could you first tell me what happened here? What happened? People from the bridge above the camp heard a woman screaming and saw a mass of refugees attacking a man. Clearly not a refugee. When the camp guards came by, the man was floating in the sewage canal with a knife in his chest. Bam. A murder. Big news for Cordona. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. Okay. Well, uh, who is the victim? Did you learn anything about the dead man? The fellow looks like a thug. I've had dozens like him fished out of the sea over the past 20 years. Ever since these refugees arrived, there have been people on Cordona with bad blood in them. My best bet is that this thug had something against them too. And no clue as to his identity? He had some items on his body, but nothing to indicate who he was or where he was from. I think I should catalogue his possessions in my records. Go on. They're on the table near the body. All right. Uh, anybody else hurt? And none of the refugees were harmed? One fellow was cut. He's lying over there near their kitchen. He's in a bad way. You mentioned a woman screaming who attracted the bypassers on the bridge. Was she harmed? No, she's all right, but perhaps the whole debacle started because of her. She started wailing and the refugees stood up for the girl. And where is this young woman now? Back there in the shacks, same as the rest of the refugees. She's been questioned by my men, but she's just some refugee girl. Can't understand much English. Do you have any suspects yet? You're joking, right? I've got a whole camp full of suspects. And if you ask me, this I agree, that was coming. a stupid question. Better bury him and forget about the whole thing. And now there's a crowd gathered at the camp, and my superiors say we must thoroughly interrogate the refugees. At least those who can understand any English. Do you believe that your superiors wish to get rid of the refugees? I think that both our superiors would rather keep the story quiet. Since that's an unaffordable luxury now, they're looking how to protect their public image. That's why I have to waste my time waiting for my people to turn every stone and befriend every refugee. Okay. This guy is completely irrelevant. I don't understand why we spend so much time on that. Um, let's do that. Okay. Or, hold on, or is this the one I need to pin? I'm not sure. I guess we'll see when we get Here on. we go again. Number of hours on Cordona before stumbling upon another dead body. Zero. Mm -hmm. All right, here's nine. Blood on the stone. Three. Holy shit, this crime scene is huge. Okay. Uh, four. Why do we have 
the right lane player. Body's over there. All right, we got we, this. We where does the start? Eight, five, six, seven, and is that the end? Footprints heading in that direction. The refugees have been detained and will not leave until all the circumstances are clarified. Yeah, shut up. I'm trying to hear what they're arguing about. Can't can't make out what they're saying. Alright, bare feet. They come this way. Six. We've got blood on the sand. Looks like a splash. Is this the injured man? Beads. Yeah, he's alive. That's our injured man. Broken bottles, bare feet. Shards, more blood. Uh, I'm not sure what that's marking. Some blood there on the stone. Cigarettes and knife. Is that an empty knife sheath? See if it matches the knife in the body. It'll be long and thin. Yep. Coal hmm. dust. Coal dust under the nails. I don't see much coal around here. This our guy. There's a tattoo. An on interesting his neck. tattoo. Does it mean something? It does yes. Come on. Long thin blade, yes, it does match the A steel scabbard. dirk. Sharp. A common accessory among sailors and soldiers. I'd say the blade penetrated upward, however the wound is too messy to be certain. Upward, huh? Okay. Heavy boots, with one sole far more worn than the other. This man was limping, John. Yeah. A violent death. But this man, limping. Coal dust. I think we're on to something here, John. It's our guy. Okay. Dirk scabbard. A simple leather sheath. Perfect for a dirk. One thousand pounds. A fair sum, especially considering British currency isn't very common in Cordona. Malpal, soaked with salt water. Alright, so he's some kind of sailor. One of the sailors on the ship that brought the refugees over. A furrow in the ground. A blood trail leading to or from the canal. Is that where he fell in? Clearly a left handprint here. Okay. Someone bled profusely here. I not say profusely. A fresh crack. As if the crate was hit recently. Tripped over the crate. Size 9 police boots. Police boots. Always happy to trample evidence. A heavy boot with a worn out sole. Only one bare feet. A man's footprint. Carnelian agate beads, a traditional African adornment. Okay. Stick for defending himself. 
It might have been used as an improvised weapon. Might have been, but I don't see any evidence of that. No hint of blood or impact. Yeah, exactly. The blood sprayed off the blade after the strike. Okay. And bare feet. Someone was dragged against their will. Mm -hmm. Let's go look at our injured guy. The cut is deep, potentially serious if not treated immediately. Eh, let's just leave him lying here for a little while. He is in shock, feverish and dehydrated. Sherry, you know first aid. Surely you have a duty to help this man. You can't leave him to certain death. You know what? I'd like to understand. What? How did our dead man end up inside the camp in the first place? Okay. Something to clean the wound, something to disinfect, something to use as a bandage. Um, there seems to be something over here. It won't do any good. That will kill, not save him. Just washed. Better than nothing to bandage the wound. Yeah. I'll use it to create a solution. I can use this to stop the infection from spreading. I've collected all the ingredients, now to prepare the first aid solution. Okay. Negative eight and ten. Negative three. Um, negative eight. So we need to increment, then we need to multiply, then we need to reverse. This one, we need to increment, we need to multiply. Oh, wait, that's decrement. Multiply. Combine. Okay. Here. Uh, thank you. This should make you feel better, my friend. Now remain lying down and drink as much water as you can. Um, no. Well done, Sherry. At least he won't die from the infection. He's a witness. How about now that I've saved your life, you tell us something. Let me find out how the intruder broke into the camp. Okay. Well, this. It's unlikely anyone could get in or out of the camp by water without alerting the police guards. No, it's too short for these walls or cliffs. If they find out about the passage, everything will go. He's 
If they find out about the passage, everything Sealed shut. I doubt our man could get through these grates. To actually try. They find out about them. Or at least pay attention to what's going on. Camp lockdown. Money. Take care of okay, I'm so. guessing you didn't get what you were after. Shut up. It happens. I always wanted to pet cat. Uh, no. No. Yes. No. No. Oh. This officer is worried that the situation with the dead body will put the camp in a strict lockdown. They will lose the money flow they were earning from their scheme. Nobody will know anything if you keep your bloody mouth shut. The coppers smell fishy here, Sherry. Sherry, just look at this. Living quarters in a sewer. What kind of a gene? Uh, okay. Genius bureaucrat. Can I guess now we have to idea. ask about the thing. Okay. May I ask for your assistance? Oh, I don't know about that. Ask one of the others. Can I ask you a question? Oh, I don't know about that. Ask one of the others. That's Time exactly to check your who, what, and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? Can you satisfy my curiosity? Unfortunately, my casebook is empty on this. This was supposed to talk to Tewksbury? Could you help me? Oh, I don't know about that. Ask one of the others. Oh, I am bored. Call me when you find the answer. You still here? Uh... I don't think I'm ready for you I'll just for look around yet. and do my paperwork. You won't even notice me. I wish. God, rude. Um, who am I supposed to talk to then? Is this familiar to you? Oh, I don't know about that. Ask one of the others. I think I need. Can I talk to this guy? No. Okay. Um. Okay. Maybe I should save this for next time. It's already been an hour and a half. Yeah, I think uh, next time we will finish this the muse from abroad and continue our investigation of the refugee camp. So we will see you then. Take care. Have yourselves a nice day.